Hello everyone, this is Rick Morgan, your favorite comic book scientist. I am in Arizona this week. I just saw the Black Widow movie here with a friend who I've seen a superhero movie with every year since 1989. So we were keeping 32 years of this and and uh, no longer having to creatively um, define the definition of a superhero movie. We're doing it again and we just went on a tour of the Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure movie locations and just got back from the Circle K a little while ago. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to meet Jerry Conway, the uh, Spider-Man writer, fate, well Marvel and DC writer. He wrote basically everything in the 70s from you know about issue about 117, about 149, the guy who killed Gwen Stacy and who needed to be getting rid of, by the way, by that time in the book. She had not contributed significantly in a very long time. And been to the Punisher, so I'm going to meet with him tomorrow. Um, and today, though, today's episode was Tales of the Tales. We're talking with uh, with uh, Pony Chang and Daniel Lopez about some of their favorite books. And Pony gave us an in-depth tutorial on authenticating um, some famous uh, content creator signatures, uh, notably Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. So I won't show all of that video here. I need to keep that a little bit under our hats, but I will show a little bit of some differences, and I will show of the signatures and also show um give a little bat some of the stories from them so um anyway uh enjoy the video take care uh nice to see you guys bye it's not really nice to see you. i don't see you guys i don't know why i said that sorry bye so if you guys can each this is wait by the way i'll have to introduce oh, yourself. Oh, oh, this oh, is rick morgan think, like there's too much pressure right now <laughs> <laughs> so this is i'm rick morgan and daniel when you like, and introduce yourself and and then sure Tony. sure uh um, my name is Daniel Lopez, and uh, you know, nice to meet y'all or be here. <laughs> Excited to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my name is Pony Chang. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Um, I'm actually uh, an acupuncturist, Chinese medicine practitioner by day, but most of my days I'm thinking about comic book collecting. I work harder in my comic book collection than I do my day job. Yeah. You so have I, the most impression, <laughs> impressive comic collection I've known anybody firsthand to have. Uh, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so, now, he, now he gave a real introduction. Now I feel like I think I get different. I'm, I'm also a coach and a referee by trade. I've always kind of, I've been collecting since I was a teenager. Um, my dad, he collected comics when he was young, uh, when he was in the Marines. Of course, just like every other story, my dad sold those off when he was got deployed. Um, but when I was growing up, one of the like the reason that I love comics is my dad uh, would take a take me to the local comic book shop, and he would say, "Okay, you can buy one." And so I would spend 20 minutes like reading, looking at the covers, looking at the pictures. And of course, I didn't know anything about first appearances, keys, this and that. So I was always just going for what I thought was the coolest. And, uh, you know, that kind of sparked my love for comics. And my dad still like loves to see the books that I pick up now that I'm like collecting. Uh, you know, no, I guess I'm a directed collector now, but uh you know, I just, I just, that's my passion for it. I, you know, I really do love it. And of course, COVID kind of had more free time and I picked up a, a couple more books than I normally did. You know, do one, one every few months now, then it turned into one, one every few days. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're yeah. guilty. <laughs> I got back into it also just since COVID. It was, um, my parents are moving to a condo. They're like, um, you know late 70s now so they need to downsize and as i went back to my old house to clean up my room and then there's my comic books um yeah. from more than 30 years uh, 25 30 years ago and that's how it happened so it's literally been just the last six seven months that i got back and it's an interesting time to get back the market just ridiculous so you know it was yeah. definitely fun while it lasted um but to answer uh, rick's question about um the most meaningful book in my collection um even in my teenage years, I decided to focus in on, on X-Men. So all the X-Force, X-Factor, Excalibur, X-whatever, you know, and, um, and so it went after the first appearance and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, you know, I didn't, ha I, I didn't have the money to buy X-Men uh, number one when I was a kid, right? So literally. Well, yeah, what kid does, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, believe it or not, I had, uh, I had the money to buy um, um, giant size X-Men. And then, uh, and um, so I got had two copies, one, uh, both raw, obviously <laughs> didn't have stats back then. And then I submitted it for grading and one of them actually came back 
Oh, and, wow. Yeah, yeah. As uh, people couldn't believe it, that what does your childhood copy? This is not bad for for a first submission, and <laughs> that definitely helped me ha have some capital to play with. I, I was able to trade down and get some money out of it, and then that kind of helped the, the, the help me for the next couple of months. But going back to the um, uh, excellent number one, I was you know I, I was like you know the price is just going up all the time, like. It's now or never. Just got to bite the bullet and do it. Because I would next year it's gonna be more, you know. <laughs> so, just gotta yeah. do it. So I was looking at this e e eBay and I and I, and I um and I found I found I found a book that I want. Uh, it was an X Men number one, um, a six point oh, and it was still kind of affordable back then. Now it's not okay, but <laughs> so, yeah. So I mean, now I look around, you don't see you know barely anything over four point five. Okay, but so I got it. And then, uh, you know, I thought, hey, I'm going to be happy with this one. This is going to be the one, you know, six. I'm happy with that, right? And, and to make a long story short, um, uh, a friend of mine, a fellow collector, brought to my attention that there is a, a, a Kirby and Stanley signed XM number one. It was only a 2.0. It was uh, being auctioned at Comic Connect. And... And um, you know, it, and I, I estimated that it was probably going to go for easily fifteen to sixteen k, and uh, and it turned out it only auctioned for about twelve point six. And the reason for that, after, in retrospect, was because the cover was detached. Um, but I didn't, you know, I didn't go for it. I already had a six point right? Why would I go for? You know, one is enough. I mean, I, I like X Men, but I don't need to have two X Men, right? So that's just getting crazy at that. Yeah, <laughs> I just read, really, uh, yeah. I mean, even though, you know, obviously, since I only collect X Men, having Kirby and Stan, the king and the man, as the co creator X Men, would be the grail of grails for me. And just by chance alone, that book ended up, um, you know, the person that won the auction must have traded it with a local big time dealer, and it ended up in Toronto. So, so I knew it was coming. It, it, he likes to make posts about what's incoming. I knew it was coming, but he said, you know, this one's for my, my PC. And then two days later, he's like, it's for sale. Okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> suddenly, yeah, suddenly, suddenly he's asking, he's flipping it, asking for, uh, for 20,000 for that book. And so I know how much that book had just auctioned. For. Mm -hmm. so it was, it was 12.6. That's the, the, you know, the, the easiest, uh, it is uh, 7.4 grand anybody's ever made, okay? <laughs> so I didn't pay for it by cash. I, I was able to negotiate a trade. So I traded the six, got some other books back from it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, yeah, so for me, that that is uh, the, the grail of all grails because I only collect X-Men to have X-Men number one have yeah. the, 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 um, the creator signature on them. Uh, what was interesting about the story is that um, the... The original uh, um, uh, Comic Connect had it um, certified by Beckett before they got us the slab by CGC. So this way, you can kind of have the best of both worlds. You can have the authentication, and it's not CBCS, but you have the authentication papers, but in a, in a CGC slab. So that was that was kind of interesting. And uh, and uh, uh, what was uh, even more more interesting is that I went I went to um, went back on the Facebook uh, searches and they just decided to search up um, uh, XM number one, Kirby signed. And I was able to find the guy in New Jersey that originally gave it to Comic Connect to, to auction. And I was able to reconnect with him and find out about the book before it was given to Comic Connect oh, and, that's cool. how, and how he had got it from his uncle. His uncle got it signed by Kirby himself and the uncle, you know, knew they like comics, gave it to him. And him, you know, going back to the father and son, he, so he and his son um, collect comic books. And, uh, and then so they decided that, um, you know, they could use that money to expand the collection and so forth. So thankful for that. I have the opportunity to get that book. So it's, if anything, um, not only is it just a kind of fulfilling a childhood dream, but it's just, it's also, um, in the last few months, connecting all these different collectors and uh, and also you know um, people, are, everybody has different walks of life, but we all walk the same comic path, and so to speak. So that has been mm -hmm. tremendously uh, rewarding and you know, just totally intangible rewards beyond just like holding a book in my hand. Mm -hmm. That is an amazing story. That is a hard story to top. I'm going to meet Jerry Conway tomorrow, actually. Yeah, 
here in That's Phoenix, awesome. and I'm going to see him. And so uh, I'm going to have him sign some of my old uh, ASM. He's the guy who did the Gwen Stacy die and Green Goblin die. He mm-hmm. guy who created Punisher. Yeah, uh, that's really cool. And that's a that's a big thing for me. I'm like I'm trying to some of the things I'm trying to do is get all the main like comic book artists and writers from, you know, uh, I don't I I missed out on the Ditko uh, stuff. You know, I, I can find some later maybe. But I'm I trying to put all it together, and I also have um, I have every Amazing Spider Man comic and amazing fantasy 15 twice over now and i have oh, and that's nice. a lot that's a that's a that's a, not a lot of people have every one of those books right and yeah. i have um, i'm working on every appearance of spider-man in every title i've been halfway through the 70 he even appeared in one dc comics he appeared in a jla uh, as uh in a, as a guy in a spider-man suit and they called him web spinner to try to get ripped off and they they had him and a guy called captain commando <laughs> so there is an appearance and he actually appears peter parker appears in two hulks 152 153 in 1972 i believe as peter parker as a photographer with oh. jonah jameson taking a picture of the hulk it's very clearly peter very, very clearly looking you know even <laughs> romita even though it's ross andrew era yeah. uh he looks and it's very clearly peter not called out but so those are some of the deep the deep cover spidey appearances you know, right yeah. that you wouldn't you're going for all, all the first experiences yeah so I every, guess everyone, best, anyone, uh, yeah. X Men thirty seven would then it would be the first Spider Man I think in X Men or something like that. You have that. Uh, one. He appears in an earlier one, I believe, but he's actually not. Not I'm thinking of yeah, Avengers. Like I'm thinking of Avengers. There's a there's a, it's an imposter in the Spider Man <laughs> suit, right? Yeah. So Same it's kind of like, like a gray zone. America, it's like the imposter, right? Yeah. All right, Daniel, you're up now. You're on the spot, buddy. What do you got for <laughs> yeah. us? Um, I mean, I have like. Uh, I guess two books. I mean, one is like really like a book that I've kind of like is like a kind of crown of my collection. But then I recently picked up the second book. And because of like my dad, it's kind of like my close runner up. But so it just and it just so happened to be in the same title. But I used to collect a bunch of different books. Like I told you, I wasn't really going for value or keys. I was just kind of going for covers and stories of this and that. As I started to get a little bit older, I started to say, oh, okay, well, let me collect comics with significance, you know what I mean? But then um, this was probably about, let's see, four, about six or seven years ago, I was living out up in Pittsburgh, and I went to the Steel City Comic Con, and uh, there was a dealer there that had some books on his wall, and I didn't know anything about them, but they just kind of caught my eyes. And it was a journey into, a journey into mystery, but it was um, the pre-hero. It was like a couple of pre-hero mystery books. And I was like, what is that? And so, you know, he spent the time and talked to me and told me like, hey, journey into mystery. You know, this was by Atlas. And, you know, this was pre-Marvel and, you know, Stan and, and uh, Jack, they kind of like, you know, were running this early on. And they, they, uh, there's a lot of prototype books where, there's concepts of monsters in some of these books, but then the Hulk's you know, in one of those, I think. Right. Yeah. The Hulk is in one of them. And so uh, I'm going to do a quick share screen. And so, yeah, I'm going to move to a location with more light. Oh, I've almost spoiled your story, man. I'm glad I didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> so this is journey into mystery 66. And uh, it's called The Return of the Hulk. Now, this, there's, two, there's two books in this storyline that have this Hulk character. This is the second one. But in my opinion, has, is, the, is the classic cover for this. But um, this is the Hulk prototype. You know, it's written by Stan Lee. And so I kind of fell in love with this. And so I told myself, you know what? I'm going to go after. I'm going to do something different. And I'm going to go after the Journey into Mystery pre-hero um, run and so i've been working on this run and of course there's 82 issues because journey into mystery 83 is thor first thor um and so i started to work on them and then i you know they're hard to find in the wild because you know to find a dealer that has one is good but you know to find two is like you hit the jackpot you know and then of course they're mostly the later issues but so i um Anyway, it's a developed a relationship with a dealer that lived in Virginia, but he kind of, I, he would travel that Eastern seaboard circuit and he knew I was working on this run and this was kind of the one I was looking for. And I was, and so he 
was at a con and he had my number and texted me and said, Hey, I found this Jurian's Mystery, the whole prototype cover. And I was like, Oh man, this is, I all really, really wanted it. And uh, so, you know, I, he's, I told him, Hey, you know, how much does the guy want? Can you buy it for me? You know, give you whatever $25 finder's fee, $50. Because the book at the time was like, it's like a, it's like a 5055 and can be a little bit pricier. Even for back then, it was like four or 500 bucks or something like that. Well, for me, it was really pricey. You know, it was like, um, and then he tells me, uh, I have a crazy idea. And I was like, what's that? And he's like, Stan Lee is here at this, at this, at this time. And I was like, no way. Are you really willing to offer to get this signed by Stan Lee? And he's like, for you, I'll, I'll do it. Cause I, I, I'm going to get some stuff stand by sign, you know? And so sure enough, he, uh, he waved in line, um, uh, and he got it signed by Stan Lee. And then, you know, like a week later it came in the mail and I mean, I just, I like, I love it. It's like, it's one of those things like to have a Hulk prototype This Hulk is one of my favorite characters, a Hulk prototype, a uh, pre-hero gym book and a nice grade that's signed by the, you know, father of Marvel and the creator on, on a book like that is in my opinion, probably pretty rare. Wow. 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 <laughs> That is an amazing story. I wish I, I had to show it with you to my wife, uh, my, my in-law's house, but um, so I have, it, I have it stored there. But it's, uh, yeah, I, I, am, I am amazed. That is, that is a great story. I, I think I've told this story on this channel before, so I'll keep it short, because, but you guys haven't heard it, I don't think. Is that I, got, I had a, early on, I had a Spider-Man number three. Side, and there's a typo inside the book where Dr. Octopus calls, um, he calls, uh, he says, and now Superman, I've got you in my grasp. So he accidentally <laughs> calls him Superman in the book. <laughs> so I had, I met Stanley and I said, and there was no line. I mean, I met him at a, and I there's, it was at a banquet hall in a red lion, I believe early on. And there was no one in line to see him at a comic book convention. He was at a table by himself, no handlers <laughs> or anything. I walked up and I said, he said, step right up, young man. He said to me, I <laughs> told him, hi, Stanley. It's nice to meet you. I got these books. He goes, oh, yeah, I remember these. These are good books. And then I said, hey, did you notice <clears throat> um, that this says Superman here? And so in my book, he signed he signed his name in there in my number three of Spy Amazing Spider-Man. And he wrote, it's a good thing DC's lawyers were out of town that week, he said. On the <laughs> and then he, he stood it? up and he took his – yeah, he wrote that in the book. And he wrote – and I have it still. And he put his arm around me, and my girlfriend at the time was with me, took a picture, and I, and I sat – and visited with him for I don't know two three minutes and he signed a bunch of my book I met him several times in my life but huh. that's the only time I actually got to sit and just visit with him yeah and talk to him he, and he was telling me this famous lines of I've told this so much story so many times it might even be true you know and stuff he's like <laughs> oh, it's just bombastic you know and and he was like and I was so nervous you know what else is that someone had brought him something to eat some some other person i don't know who it was and they brought him a chili dog and like a lemonade right and i'm about shit in my pants because you got two situations here one is stanley's about to sign my at the time oldest spider-man was number three he's also eating a chili dog and drinking <laughs> like over the top of my comic book so my emotions were all over the place i didn't know what yeah. to do i'm like Fear i'm sweating and at the same time yeah, I couldn't. I had too many stresses on my body at once. I was like, Please don't. Um, what do I do? Stan Lee drops a chili dog on my book. I don't know what to do. I was like, I was like sweating bullets. But that's yeah. a, that's a true story. Yeah, it's it's a funny one. That is yeah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah, so Pony, to, uh, you were going to tell us some stuff too today, right? About uh, you have some expertise you might want to share. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna go over that. But I just want to say a couple of things about the um, yeah, kind of the uh, the crossovers. Like uh, I recently saw a post. It was a Batman book. I think it might have been Neil Adam. I'm not sure. Um, where Batman was at a costume party, and there was like Thor and Havoc in the background, and so it was okay because it was a costume party. So that they went, they let that fly. You know, heard about that uh, one? Very yeah. similar to my yeah. Halloween issue of GLA. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and um, there was also the issue. One, I forget which book it was. There's an issue that's like first for appearance of Jack Kirby and Stan Lee as himself in the comic book. There, there was a, there was another issue like that. And then I think um, it's SNL and SNL. So there's a Marvel team up with Saturday Night Live hosts. Yeah. And the Saturday Night Live cast. Yeah. And I believe 
I'm not sure if it's Stanley and Jack Kirby, but it's some other Marvel editors. Although these are like, this is older, right? This is like, you know, probably like 60s, 70s. Like they, they, oh, they, oh, quite oh, early oh, on, they had them like as themselves. Yeah. And then okay. there's also um, apparently Clark Kent as a reporter in Marvel Comics several times. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. I have to look it up. I don't know which issue it is, but he has made a several appearances. A journal, journalist but just happened by the name of Clark Kent. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. See, this is so nerdy, right? This is like only we <laughs> like it. not right. <laughs> There's a tattoo artist that did my uh, Spider-Man tattoo. His name's Clark Kent, <laughs> <laughs> which I had conflicted feelings about, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, I shared um, with um, well, actually, um, let me just. Um, um, Rick, let me tell you how um, Daniel became Sorry. part of this whole conversation today. Um, okay. So um, being, see, I tell you, like I always say that if I work as hard as my day job, I'll be, I'll be, um, I'll be famous by now. Like, <laughs> the comic books, right? Yeah. If I work as hard with, uh, with my day job as I do in my comic, I'll be famous by now. But I don't say the word rich because I, I'll always be comic poor. If I work <laughs> to find something, I always have something that I'm you know, paying off. But um um, so, you know, I was scouring the, the Facebook for looking for signed by Jack Kirby X-Men. I went to CG, CGC boards, I searched, and, and it was literally like a week after Daniel had posted something. He posted a uh, help with authenticating X-Men, a Kirby signature on X-Men 10 and 12. So the yep. first Kzar and first um, J- a Juggernaut. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, holy shit, what is this? <laughs> it's a double signed, you know, like, yeah. and it's Juggy. So, um, and then, uh, and I emailed him, it's got nothing, you know, he's, he, the guy got married. I can't blame him. Right? So he didn't yeah. get married. <laughs> I, I, I posted it and then, and then I literally went on the flight to get married like a day and a half later. So I did. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I was like, you know, how did I get, how did I you know, reach this guy? I emailed this guy named Dan and it turned out it was the wrong guy. <laughs> okay, so he's like, I'm the kind of guy that you're looking for. You know, like I was really, you know, I'm telling you, I work harder on my comic books than I, than I, than I my real job, right? And then, uh, so fortunately he got back to me and then and I told, I gave him my analysis. And then, um, so we, and and um, I told him, yeah, that, that I think, as far as I think, I think they're legit, you should get them. And, but if you, for some reason you don't, you decide to only pick up one, not, not two of them. I'll get the whichever one that you have left. Even though I have one already, not double sign. I have, I have one of, I have either one of them Kirby signed. But it's good to have an extra one as as trade potential for other issues that I might need, right? And then uh, so he, went, he went back the next day, and the juggernaut is sold. Mm. Okay? So, yeah, um, yeah, I know, I know. It's just it's like that, you know. And and so he got to pick. He picked number ten, and it turns out there was n- number seventeen as well. So mm. he picked up both. And then he tells me that. There's one left, and it's a number five, and it's the only one, who, only number that I don't know who has. It's just crazy. Everything's so perfect. Like so I, I, so I don't have number four or six, but at least I know who has it, right? But I don't know anybody who has number five. And here's that book in in the store in Austin. Okay, so so I was like, and then, so he didn't tell me the name of the store, right? So. <laughs> So, so I got to be like, okay, can you please tell me what the name of this floor? You know, so he got back to me and I called him up and then uh, the, the rest is history. But uh, yeah, so um, so that's why uh, Daniel is uh, in this little meeting with us today. He was <laughs> instrumental in, um, so by the way, the story is that apparently some guy, a gentleman in his 60s, um, came in and had an entire run, 1 to 18. I think they made a, mis- made a mistake because technically Jack Kirby went to 17, but who knows? Maybe he went, it was 18. Yeah. No. So the guy came all, all, all 18, all double signed. So yes. this, uh, wow. Rick, you think my collection is good? Like there was actually somebody has once upon a time had a collection that is like really Smithsonian. Okay? Yeah. And, and then, okay, so the, 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 these are the nearest across my mind. You know, A, he stole them. So he's just fencing them, okay? Because <laughs> who would want to sell that, right? Why would you want to sell? Who loves them that much and then changes their mind and wants to dump all of them? So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. or I, I've seen this happen before. Let's say your best buddy collects comics and he passed away without leaving instructions, and then now the best buddy gets it and decides to sell it and give it to the widow. I've seen that happen before. Yeah. Okay, 
So I don't know, just are just things that came to my mind, just thinking out loud. But anyways, this guy came and sold them all, and every single one sold. And the the last the three last copy is in among this Zoom chat right now. Yeah. Uh, copy. <laughs> and, but but um, but I asked them. Another fellow collector I know has a Jack Kirby uh, X Men number one uh, CBCS five point signed by Kirby. He bought it not knowing whether it's real or not. But the seller said to him, "It's on the inside cover, inside page, right? What if you get a CGC?" Worst case scenario, just say a name. You you won't get dinged for it. He bought, yeah. but he bought it. You got to verify. It turned out to be a real Kirby. So oh, yeah, nice. cool story, right? So yeah, so that guy he was asking me, can you ask the um yeah the the Austin's comic store people how much they sold the double sign X Men one for? So I was able to talk to the store guy today because while well, doing my credit card payment, he told me that was actually three years ago. So this this collection had came into this shop three years ago already. And over three years, it, until today, the last copy was sold. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the number one was sold quite early and the guy didn't really know. He just said it was very bad condition. He said it was a two. I mean, two is not that bad. Okay. But he made it sound like really bad, but a 2.0 with, if it was a two, with two signature, he said three years ago, they only sold it for $4,500. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That crazy? That is crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that wouldn't happen today. No, I mean even I don't know even the point five probably. <laughs> <laughs> I think a couple pages of it might go for that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that's the that's the full circle. So now we can. Uh, so that's the segue to the Kirby discussion, I guess. Okay. So what I'm yeah. going to do is I'm going to go into my Zoom Zoom. Um, folder since you guys all have the exact same one and i'll try to share share screen with you um let me just go into my my dropbox if the connection is good i should be able to pull them up within dropbox and this way they will be pretty much in the same order that is it is in your dropbox so that if you ever want to go back to it you can refer it pretty easily and i try to name the files of the issue that i came from but i purposely name it in such a way that I don't give you an idea whether it's authentic or not, so that you can go back and try to test yourself and see. Quiz yourself. Yeah, quiz I see a game show that. coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Right? He's gonna, he's gonna quiz us. That. Yeah, and also um, I name it sometimes um, based on um, some interesting features. That let's say if the signature are not side by side, but they're stacked. So I have a lot of examples of stacked Jack Kirby's. Okay, and also. Um, also, some depending on position, whether it's front cover, bottom of the splash page. Occasionally, you have it on like the top of the splash page. So, if it's unusual, I will name the the file name to give you an idea, so you can quickly search something unique about that that file. Okay. Um, okay. So, I'm going to go to my Dropbox first, and then and then I'll try to share screen. Sorry, folks. I had to cut the video off there. Uh... You know, Pony, for obvious reasons, didn't want to reveal too much of how he can authenticate different signatures uh, to encourage forgers. But I can tell you that we talked for nearly two and a half hours and went over a lot of different signatures of Jack Kirby. I feel a lot better about it now. And if there's some of that conversation that I feel I can edit out and safely kind of show some examples of fake and real um, signatures, I'll add it. It was an interesting conversation. Anyway, we had fun talking, and I hope you enjoyed following along at least the parts that uh, that you got to see. So, all right, uh, take care. Bye bye.